Hey guys, Proofman, Tim. What's so up, Tim? <laughs> What's up? Good. Very so, good. what have you, uh, what have you, have we been up to in the next uh, last few hours? So, like we said in the previous video, we had, uh, we spent a few days at the Intel Labs, at the Intel OC Labs. Uh, we've been um, we've been working mostly on a 360 uh, video for the, the past day. Um, and advanced 360 video as well. Yeah, so the so the idea is not to just do 360 video because that's actually easy. Um, there's no challenge in there pretty much besides finding that appropriate bandwidth. Uh, stitching tools nowadays, like software stitching tools, if you want to build your own array with cameras, are pretty good. And uh, we've been mostly working with a camera system that is doing the the stitching already uh, sort of in an automatic way it's still software stitching in any in, uh, in most of the systems but oh, by the way the stitching is when you have like two video feed yeah. that you have to st stick them together when you do a panorama that's, that's actually stitching as well yeah but that's so basically you want to align the features in the shot so when you turn your head around you don't see uh, when you start from one camera and you move to the next one they sort of completely align uh, the stitching, what it also do usually, it's also balancing colors, adjusting exposures, um, things like that. So you, when you turn your head around, nothing is really obvious. It's like you're looking at one single camera shot. Um, so, um, so that part is actually sorted. It's not really a big deal. It mostly depends on how much money you want to spend on your camera system. That's basically it. Like the one we're using now is uh, it's it's about one 3, with the US 3, US 3, US, uh, like 3,500. Yeah, yeah 3,500 USD. It's called the. Uh, Aura 4i, uh, which is the camera and like a stitching, a stitching box. So the stitching box is like, a, it's a computer basically. I don't know what OS is running this one. It's actually not very transparent in that way. It's the sort of thing you just boot it up and it's automatically taking care of the stitching. It has an HDMI out and it just outputs the signal. The box can also stream by itself, which is also not very anything complicated. Uh, we use straight the HDMI out, we get a 4K signal and then we can stream that in 4K the way we want it. So what we mentioned before with the augmented stream, the idea here is to uh, also add picture in picture within the 360 sphere where you're looking. So for example, if you have your uh, VR headset or you're using your phone to, to look around, uh, you can look around the, the space, but you can also add uh, display elements in there. So for example, if you're watching, uh, overclocking for instance you would be able to look around and when you uh, we could place in that sphere the, the integrated stream of the of the screen of that overclocker so you would be able to also see exactly what's uh, going on in the stream uh, on the screen so that's that's one thing and then the step further than that is also to add telemetry to it so to be able to to monitor um, things like temperatures, voltages, and frequencies, why not, and other things. Uh, also working right now to, to add stuff like um, power consumptions from the power supply. Interesting stuff. Uh, so that's things we're going to, to talk a bit more about in the coming few days and weeks. Um, but basically, that's, that's the idea. So that's what we call augmented, augmented 360 stream. So it's not just a 360 view, which uh, you would probably get bored of after a while, but where you have something, actually something to do in the 360 sphere, where you can just look around and you got information, you got, uh, of course, you have the audio from the casters on top of that. Uh, maybe why not have a picture in picture from the casters desk, desk uh, as well. I mean, I mean the, the audio for now is the only part we haven't mastered yet. No, because we, we have some ideas now, we, yeah. we want to make it work, but like the, especially spatial in 360, the spatial is, yeah. audio is very difficult to, uh, to get, and there's, and there's not, not, not that many, many software now. that support that this spatial audio uh, kind of things. Yeah, but ideally, you know, you have like a shotgun, a shotgun of boom mics uh, on top of each of the overclocking system, for example, and you will be able, if you're looking to the left, to the guy on the left, you will be able to hear, oh, on the right, uh, the pot is getting out of it, and to it, it does, you know, that kind of particular sound, so you can hear it. But you need, right to, you, you need turn, to place it in a, in a specific way, yeah. like in a specific position, like a speci special position to have it. And this is extremely difficult as of today. Uh, yeah, it's mostly to, make to it find happen. The, the right software for that. So. I mean, even the picture-in-picture -picture thing, we're using uh, 
I think we can say what we're using. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a software, it's uh, available. Not sure if it's yet publicly available. It's kind of like a, a big, yes. it's a better software. It's done by a company in Sweden called Voices, and they, uh, they, they use that already for events like DreamHack, so for mostly gaming events. I know uh, I think CNN, CNN used that used, as well that recently. for the Eclipse. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's cool stuff as well. So, here it adds the picture-in-picture the picture with the and it calculates also how it should deform basically the, the view. So once it's played back in the VR headset, it looks right. Um, and you can do all sorts of things like a placement uh, at 360 and all that stuff. So that's, that's cool stuff. It all gets together and uh, we also map out the, the production flow in terms of how we connect uh, all the moving pieces together. It's, it's you a know. little bit complicated, yeah, kind of but like that calculating works. how many cables you need and uh, how many capture cards we, we're gonna have to get. Um, so, for now, it basically takes an extra PC to to be able to add 360 stream. And of course, for most events, not everyone has a, the possibility to watch 360. You have to think we're going to be streaming 4K at around uh, something between recommended specs of 30 to 50 megabits per second. Um, so, so most so people means, don't even have yeah. that in download, so imagine... If you, if you have less than 100 megabytes yeah. internet speed, you will never be able to watch this live well, you still have at to 4K. render it also after as well. So, so so basically you will be able to watch it live in 360 with a headset or your cell phone but you will never be able to to watch live yeah. the full with the full stream. If but we, for the recording yeah. that will be available yeah, yeah, which is very good. That's cool yeah. And uh, cuz if we want to stream 360 like a more available way and that's maybe something we can try out or YouTube might do it just by transcoding it. So basically you can lower the bandwidth but what you're going to see if you have a 1080p incoming image it's probably something that is going to be 360p in your VR camera in your VR headset so it's gonna be it's gonna be yeah not, not that great looking it's quite possible you won't be able to read anything out of the screens from the picture in this picture because the text is gonna be like, so, so, so like all this like the, the way it should be readable you should be able to see the details and so on this is something that takes a lot of time and that's why that's what we're doing here actually one of the main reasons why we're here is to test this out to make sure it's working to make sure it's usable for life not just as because technically, yes, you can do it. Sure, no problem. Yeah, but, but would it, it be is, good? Is it gonna? Is it, yeah, is it gonna be readable? Does it add anything? Um, does it? Is it something that users are also going to be able to maybe watch in a nice way? Um, so yeah. So we probably, if we stream 360 anyway, we're always gonna have the actual the regular stream too, where it's actually much more easier to see something from close up um, with more maybe not necessarily more interesting, but more. Um, more digestible for the viewers, so we gotta just oh, try it out. it's for you guys, huh? yeah, we, do yeah. that. we gotta try it out, see how it goes. I mean, apparently 360 and VR is, as they say, the future, so why not? Well, actually, there's a lot of discussion about that. I read a very interesting yeah, article. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I can't remember exactly you which know, it's like all those was. keywords, right? Like, there's a lot of uh, throwing, you know, of, uh, artificial the, intelligence. Yeah, yeah, the cloud, the thing, the, the this, the there. Um, I mean, like, you already start to see right now more and more people when they talk about the cloud, they just say <coughs> the servers, you know, because yes, it's just a regular. I mean, server. the cloud is basically like it's, servers it's just that like are not yours. <laughs> that are not yours, and where you can basically spread the load across multiple platforms. You can, but it's all like integrated in a way that it's invisible and very easy to control. Transparent. So, uh, maybe AR, like augmented reality, has. Uh, is I'm more pretty sure this has way more potential um, than VR. Uh, what AR could maybe also translate in the VR field is that, for example, for 360 video, do, do we need 360? Is the person going to rotate around on his chair? You know, I mean, this is an obvious case of that is not going to happen. If you're watching something at best, you're looking 180 degrees. Uh, this allows you to stream at a much better quality. Uh, you only stream half the image of the 360. It takes less bandwidth if you want to do the same thing. So. I mean, why not? Maybe this is more interesting and maybe this makes a lot more sense. Already, if you've uh, seen some 360 videos on Facebook, you rarely rotate completely around the view. I mean, you have to scroll The biggest time. issue is like, most of the time if you watch that, I mean, I will talk for myself. I'm seconds. usually that, I'm watching this, I'm watching that on the toilet. I cannot turn completely around, that doesn't work. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting use case, sure. Uh, if you're one of the toilet watching VR guys, uh, 
Actually, you have to clean your phone every now and then because it's full of germs. Anyway, uh, all that to say <laughs> that uh, if it all goes to plan, uh, we'll try to have um, as much as possible of those moving parts together for uh, the World Tour event at the DreamHack. DreamHack uh, in Dream less Hack than Montreal. two weeks now, like a week and a half. So yeah, that's the weekend of the 8th to the 10th. So probably stream will be on the, let's say, on the 9th, 9th then. Uh, ideally, we'll use that for the for the finals, uh, for the amateurs or extremes or both. We'll see how it goes, and um, we'll see. Yeah, maybe it's going to be interesting. Maybe we'll see what people think. How many people you know can actually watch it? Uh, technically, we have really good internet also at Dreamhack, so that's also kind of uh, one of the, the main reason why we know we're going to test that. Day. Yeah, why why we can try it? Because so far this year there hasn't been a single event where we had more than five megabits upload. Um, so. Which That's is, a no -go which is a bare the, limit for, for doing anything. And 360 yeah. it's a no-go. That's it's a full-on no-go if you don't have high yeah. bandwidth available. Actually, on that point, I would like also to say that the Intel C Labs have very good uh, guest Wi-Fi. Uh, 100 megabits upload on the Wi-Fi is not that. <laughs> yes, hard. just because it's wired to like the other point is wired to like 100 megabits. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but that means also the the Wi-Fi is pretty good. Or maybe the antenna is right next to me. <laughs> But it's, uh, it's pretty good, otherwise we, we can be testing that, so that's also quite a, quite a good surprise from, uh, from this uh, testing session. So, so yeah, we are here still uh, tomorrow for uh, summer testing. Tonight we are meeting with some uh, local overclockers here in the, in the region, uh, which some of them actually work uh, here at uh, Intel full time. Um, so it's going to be quite a good evening. And We'll probably update you guys on what's coming next, and then this uh, coming weekend it will be will be at PAX West in Seattle. And there's actually we're doing a I would say a workshop. It's not a workshop. It's a panel. A, a panel, like a presentation panel, at 2 p.m. Saturday at the Cat Theater at PAX. Suppose it's live somehow somewhere. Okay. They say it might be live on the PAX, uh, okay. PAX stream, but we don't know which one exactly because they have multiple ones. So if you happen to catch it, catch up the PAX stream on uh, on Twitch, well, look at the Cat Theater at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Maybe that's going to be us uh, doing a panel about uh, the race for PC performances, a never-ending story. And I'm going to have some very nice guests there. Uh, you will be one of the guests. I will be a moderator for that panel. I'm going to have Ustan Benet from Puget System, and we're going to have Leslie from AMD as well on the panel, which is um, very interesting to have these guys on the panel, and you will know why. Saturday at 2 p.m. from the Cat Theater. All right, I think that's it for today, right? Uh, guys, if you like this kind of vlog, let us know on the comments. Uh, give a thumbs up if you like what we're working on and let us know exactly what you want to see next in the next few uh, vlogs. Up until next time, keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. <laughs> that's gonna be some B-roll. <laughs> Literally. Pas de stabilisateur dans la GoPro. Pas sur celle-là, sur la. Batman! <rire>